Hey everybody, it's Emily. Welcome to another Grass River micro class. I'm hanging out off the woodland loop today on a beautiful summer day. So our topic this time is dragonflies and damselflies. So we'll talk about their really interesting life cycle. We'll talk about how to tell the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly. And we'll talk about five of the most common species that we see here in the natural area. So we'll start with the life cycle. So the eggs hatch underwater, and once they hatch, those little dragonflies or damselflies, I'll be referring to them as odonates um, from now on, just meaning both dragonflies and damselflies, their, uh, their order that they belong to is odonata, so odonates. Um, so those odonates are nymphs then, once they hatch from their eggs, and they will spend one to three years underwater in that nymphal stage, um, and during that time, um, basically their only job is to eat and grow. Um, and they'll molt like 10 to 17 times um, throughout that aquatic life stage. Uh, and they are voracious predators. <laughs> um, they will eat other aquatic macroinvertebrates, so other little critters living in the stream. Um, so once they... Um, leave that larval stage. And I should say too, they look really different when they're in that nymphal stage uh, than they are when they are adults. So the, the um, dragonfly nymphs look pretty stout, um, but they still got six legs. Um, they've got a really stout body though. And then the damselflies are slender. And then those, they have three sort of what look almost like fans to me or like flags on the end of their body. And those are their gills. Um, so once they have finished that nymphal stage and they are big enough for their final molt, they will crawl out of the water, usually on a vertical um, piece of emergent vegetation, like a cattail or a sedge or that's growing in the water, um, or dock pilings, um, or maybe even rocks that might be um, in the water. And they'll crawl out of the water and then they will split the back of their exoskeleton and they will crawl out um, as a fully fledged adult. And so you can often find these um, old skins, quote unquote, um, of the last nymphal stage, you know, still in that vertical position, clinging on to reeds or sedges or cattails or the dock or whatever. Uh, this one we actually found at the Grass River Dock um, and you can see that this is a dragonfly and the back has been split open um, and that's where the adult crawls out and then they let their wings dry for about an hour and then they go about their business as adults and as adults they don't live very long, not nearly as long as they do as nymphs um, and really their only job as adults is to find a mate and to mate and then for females to lay eggs. Um, and the female lays eggs, as you might expect, um, really near the water. Some species will actually sort of touch down their ovipositor um, at the, in their abdomen um, on the water and lay eggs as they go. Some will lay eggs sort of injected into the stems of sedges and cattails right at the water's edge. And so then when those eggs hatch, the, lar the nymphs will just sort of drop into the water. And then the life cycle starts all over again. All right, let's talk about the difference between dragonflies and damselflies. So they belong to different suborders, um, and there are some anatomical differences. So on average, dragonflies, um, their bodies are much stouter, and they are much stronger flyers. Dragonflies or damselflies tend to be slender, and they're sort of weak, fluttery flyers. Um, and then the position of the wings when they're perched is a good way to tell the difference too. Dragonflies will perch with their um, wings straight out like an airplane. Um, damselflies will perch with their wings, I can't really do it, but uh, back sort of like folded over their back or at a 45 degree angle up like that. Uh, their eyes and their heads are, are also different. I got a mosquito here. Um, the dragonfly heads are much more bulbous and almost as long as they are wide, and damselfly heads are very hammerhead-like. Uh, so they're much wider than they are long. And the position of the eyes, the damselfly eyes will be sort of, you know, at the ends of those hammerheads sides. Uh, dragonfly head eyes, dragonfly eyes are, are sort of, um, they make contact with each other at the top of the head. So they're much closer together um, and actually touching each other. Um, let's see, I think 
that is all the major um, anatomical differences. Now let's talk about five of the most common species of odonates that we find at Grass River. Okay, let's start with chalk-fronted corporal, which by the way, dragonflies and damselflies have awesome names. So chalk-fronted corporals uh, have sort of a dark um, body, except for like the first half of the abdomen and the thorax is actually like brilliant white um, for the males. And then the females are slightly less colorful. Wah, wah. Um, and they're like dark brown with sort of gray where the male's white is. Um, and the wings are pretty much completely clear, except where there's a dark patch right near the base. Um, they're pretty chunky, uh, these dragonflies, uh, and they fly the adult. You'll see the adults in June and July, but they really taper out as the summer um, keeps going. Uh, but they're very social. When you see one, you'll often find a lot of them. And they hunt, because um, dragonflies, just as when they are nymphs, um, when they're adults, they're also voracious predators of mostly flying insects. Um, and so they'll hunt from a, either on the ground or just a very low perch, like a rock or something. Okay, let's move on to the common whitetail, which as its name suggests, its whole abdomen for the male is like this striking chalky white color. Um, and the wings, instead of being totally clear, like the chalk-fronted corporal, um, they have so many mosquitoes today. Uh, they have a black band running through the middle of them in addition to that black patch at the base of the wing. And then the female's abdomen is brown, but her wings are more patterned. She has a total of 12 black spots on her wings, three on each wing. Um, and you can find these dragonflies flying as adults June through August. They're very common. Um, I saw a bunch of them on the spur trail out to the dock yesterday. They also hunt from the ground or a low perch. Next up is the 12 spotted skimmer. Uh, 12 spotted because the males have 12 um, white spots on their wings in between um, these black sort of patches. The females just have the black patches and they can look really similar to the female common white tails. Um, except when you look at the abdomen, um, the female 12 spotted skimmer has this straight unbroken yellow line. Um, on either side of her abdomen, the uh, common whitetail female, that line is sort of broken up and more in like a zigzag pattern. So that's how you can tell the difference between the females. Um, these dragonflies will fly as adults from June through September, um, so a little bit longer. And uh, they tend to hunt from a perch, not on the ground like our previous two dragonflies. Um, they hunt from a perch, and if you're a birder, they sort of behave like flycatchers do, uh, where they go out from their perch, they grab something in the midair, and then they come right back to the same perch um, to hunt again. So they sort of sally out like that. Um, and they have this um, unique sort of flying pattern, too, uh, where they tend to fly straight for a while and then hover for a while and then fly straight. So those are some behavioral cues to look for, too. All right, so those were our three common dragonfly species. Let's move on to damselflies now. So one of the most common ones is very ubiquitous is the ebony jewel wing, which talk about awesome names, so cool. Um, so all of the body, so head, thorax, abdomen is this like bright metallic green color that can appear like metallic blue in some lights. Um, and then they've got jet black wings. For the males. The female wings tend to be like a little bit lighter, sort of like a smoky color, um, and they have this prominent white dot on the very wing tip. Uh, you'll see these flying as adults from like late May through July. They tend to get less common um, as the summer goes on, uh, but I'm seeing a lot of them right now. They like to hang out in smaller forest streams, uh, so we see them around Finch Creek, but I was also on a paddle yesterday on the river and just was seeing a bunch of them hanging out sort of in the, the slower moving um, water areas, like near the, near the water lilies. Last but not least, we have our bluets, uh, which are is actually a complex of like 12 different species, but they all look so similar and are so difficult to differentiate uh, that we're gonna lump them together. Uh, so as the name suggests, um, they tend to have a lot of blue um, on them with some black markings, though some of the species can be um, predominantly orange or yellow-green 
Um, the fem that's the males. The females um, tend to have similar heads and thoraxes to the males, but then have more of like a tan or sort of like olive color mixed in with the blue. Uh, these ones fly June through August. Um, they're very common, very slender bodied, very um, sort of small. They, they're, um, their wings are totally clear, which maybe makes them look smaller, but I always think they look much smaller than the ebony jewel wings. All right, and I was seeing a lot of those yesterday on my paddle too. Okay, so that is your primer on Odinates, dragonflies and damselflies. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in to this Grass River micro class. Bye.